Hello, and welcome back to Joe Ka Ka Ka. I'm Sam. And I'm Jim. And we're back. It's that time of the month. That's very special. Uh, it's Sam, it's your time of the that month. That time of the month where where everything lines up. You know, Chainsaw Man and JoJo Land's coming out at the same They're time. They're all synced up. They're all synced up. Their cycle is, is complete. Cycles are synced up. <laughs> so yeah, we're here. We're, I guess we're finally into that first big stand battle. We we're, we're got that big part one in there. We do have our first, I guess this is our first uh, multi-part. Part one, but it's like part one in the of terms the of like the initial release, because things always get renamed later on. That's true. Once uh, the volume well, releases are compiled. Once the stand name is actually like officially revealed, it'll probably be changed to whatever that is. Did we say what we do, or what we are, or what we're doing? Oh, oh yeah. Uh, it's our part nine, JoJo chapter discussion and recap and like a theory crafting podcast and before we get started though well we are going to be talking about chapter six of jojo lands today and we are i feel like we've even had more than six chapters but it does certainly feel like more than half a year of jojo lands all right but before that jim do you want to read off a couple of patron names i would be happy to let me just get them up. Because if you want your name read at the beginning of, of every every month's new Joe Kaka episode, then just just go into Patreon and give it you give a dollar at, at the bare minimum. Uh yes, kindly support us on Patreon. So, as is tradition, uh, here are our current patrons. Thank you so much. We've got Call Me K, Harrison French, Sabot, Nino Nin, Classic Andy, motherfucking Classic Andy, Espion <laughs> Rustic, I'll say that again, Espion Rustic, and Illicit Pencil. Thank you all so much. Our, our very lovely uh, Joe Cox. The, Thank the, you. The beautiful Joe Cox that keep us going. Yes. So, yeah. But speaking of uh, some dumb idiots from New Jersey, uh, we got, we're back, and some Jojo Landman characters are here. It's true. <laughs> but yeah. I the- feel like people might have forgotten Jodeo and Dragona are from Atlantic City, yeah, New Jersey. They're ours. It's very important. They're ours. For us to keep mentioning <laughs> yes. that. The tr- one of the trashiest places on Earth. <laughs> it's true. I mean, it's why he had those psychopathic tendencies. He grew up in like the worst, one the, no, probably the second worst location in New Jersey. Third? There's certainly top, worse. It's in the top three. I would say it's like, in the top three. morally, it's probably one of the worst. Yes. <laughs> um, I actually went there recently. I'm so sorry. Uh, I won... Forty dollars. Oh boy! In poker, I played poker, but you lost. Or, uh, sorry, blackjack, and I won forty dollars. You lost a piece of your soul in there. I did. Uh, yes, that was a lot of fun, actually. But uh, yeah, I lo- speaking of uh, the money, though, some, I love this little cover spread. With, I guess. Yeah, with uh, we got uh, Grant. We got Grant on the fifty dollar bill. He we have the back of a twenty. Uh, we see what just twenties and fifties. It I looks guess, like right? a uh, like a, like a fence that would be like you know gated off of like a like a prison fence. Yeah, it's so, got the barbed wire up top. S- scoop up the treasures of this world, and we have the crew, or may or maybe the uh, the crews at the beginning of this because uh, this is a. It, it seems like this is probably going to be our crew for the long haul. Like yeah. we've gotten enough uh, enough group shots of them. This yeah. is a proper volume or a proper chapter cover with everyone. But we have one in more well, maybe uh one trader, who knows. We'll find out. <laughs> Already. But yeah, let's uh get started. Also, I just want to point out that Paco's butt is literally right in front of Usagi's face. Someone they posted like an author note in like Araki said, "My favorite character in the draw in part 9 is Paco." That doesn't surprise me. No, nope, did that surprise me. It also, feels like he had a lot of fun with the insane design of his body. He is safe for the long run. <laughs> He's such a fucking strange one. But yeah, so we have, we're we're going to the jungles of Hawaii. Yes, J- Hawaii is uh, believed in a tropical zone. Yeah, uh, I don't believe it's any of it subtropical. It's all very tropical, which I would love to go. It looks gorgeous. Yeah. I I very much uh, relate to Usagi here. Usagi's just kind of like he's drinking in the gorgeous animals and he's uh, sightseeing. I have to say, I mean, I, we talked about it a few days ago in our uh, well, I talked about it in our Chainsaw Man podcast, but. Uh, Usagi brings up a bird that is like uniquely evolved for, uh, I guess, this region of the rainforest, and I find that also very fascinating. Usagi is like the insert of needs and knows everything, like character, just like has that encyclopedic knowledge. He's really a wild card, and I feel like I feel like he's really a lot. He's hiding a lot right now. He's I the mean, one character that I think is going to have a big reveal. It's been very teased earlier on in a couple chapters past that he knows more than he leads on to like his he, he him knowing stands 100 percent. yeah he is, reiterates that in this chapter he's like he knows that this is a stand battle which it's almost 
like confusing to Paco. The, what is he can't like comprehend? He's never had a stand. What a stand battle he's is. He's like, look, look at my ability. This is nothing. I would have a stand. I should have a stand battle against. Like, I, I literally flex. He's gonna, he's gonna come out clutch, Sam. He's gonna, have, he's yeah. gonna go like full like uh, dark shine from uh, One Punch Man and he, get like big and humongo. He's gonna have like the remember when his SpongeBob when Patrick flexes his back and like talks with it. That's yes. what Paco can do. That's what <laughs> he <said> could. <laughs> he's gonna bite someone with his back. <laughs> he could. Oh, that'd be awesome. Okay, so so, so yeah, we have a little uh, Jodio monologue. Uh, I do love he refers to his group of four pieces of trash. Very, very good. It's very. Uh, Jodio used to be a piece of shit. That, I know. <laughs> I know he's technically a Zoomer, but that's very millennial. I feel like the relating to being trash. That's a very like millennial he's, thing. He's gonna say that he slops up his steaks and he you used know, to be gelled his hair back. <laughs> I used to be a piece of shit. <laughs> I don't think the the rock thinks people can change. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the one thing that he kind of keeps in his mind is that. Rohan gave him the rock, but not really. He said, like, I'm not giving this to you. I'm, I'm only leaving it to you. I'm lending it to you. <laughs> I'm entrusting this to you because I have no other choice right now. Very interesting. Um, so, and just to remind everyone, they did steal uh, the diamond as well. They have the diamond, they have the rock, and they have... Of an unreleased print of yes. Pink Dark Boy. Or, or just it's not even a print. It's, it's just Heaven's just... Door, yeah, well, essentially. It is which, is just, yeah, which is just the... It is just Pink, Pink Dark Boy. Yeah. But yeah, do you think that uh, Heaven's Door like design like came, or like when he made the stand like that was before he, the idea of Pink Dark Boy? That was always just his first like childhood like OC that he just like the stand just took the form of essentially. How did he get the stand? Um, hey, the good... Didn't he get it from the Arrow? Because if he got it from the Arrow, then he was probably already a mangaka. Yeah, I guess he's not like Tonio. Tonio got the well. This is also a different through, universe. Like, that's true, but like there's no I mean, sand arrows in his universe. But Pink Dark Boy always looked like uh, he always resembled. Uh, I mean, if he, Door. if he got at the same time as like you know when uh, part, when you know when uh, Kira's dad was flying around, yeah, maybe uh, do the same time frame of him maybe going to the Wall's eyes at some point because that is something Rohan would do. It's just look at this weird nat- like, natural phenomenon that's like going on with, like the weird rock formations and being like, oh, this is fun to explore for my manga, and then gets bitten by by whatever's going on there gets a fever and then gets heaven's door he did get shot by the arrow um yeah but in this in this world in this universe i could see it being just him adventuring in a just spoke rohan kind of way of just going to an to just a just to the wall's eyes and getting a stand because it's never cause he doesn't say he just, i think the point is that it's supposed to be based off his character yeah. i think the stand is the stand exists as his character and it's kind of supposed to be like a comment on like his creative ability like yeah. he, his his stand is like a reflection of his creative his uh his own original character yeah but just, just a fun little thing i think in this world that he could have done it via the wall's eyes is great to think of I, i'm assuming he's also from that morio yeah we don't know shit sam you don't know we don't know jack shit i still am putting my balls your in balls. the court for you're betting your balls i'm betting my balls on him being the original rohan uh, I, all four of them. I guess I would put my bet on him just not returning. I feel like he will. I feel like if he doesn't, it would be like baffling. It would be a baffling you know, choice. I said, I said before, Carrera just you know saying she'd come back and she just didn't in that part. It's true, but like Carrera is not like a fan favorite return character. Carrera is kind of like she was in like she three was... chapters at most. Yeah, but I loved every part of her. All right, we're we're stuck. We're already stuck, Sam. So the what the other thing too is Jodio is like, Herm, why is this rock more valuable what's, than the diamond? What's the deal with this rock? Exactly, he's doing his best, Gerald Seinfeld. <laughs> this is just a cast of Seinfeld, essentially. If you uh, think about it, if you, if you had to pick if you, for every member to be a like different Seinfeld member, it makes sense. It does. I would say it, it probably tracks. It probably tracks. Yes. Uh, Us- Usagi is Kramer. Oh, that's not what I would have said. Really? Who's David Kramer? Oh, no. Yeah, I would have said that. I would have said Usagi Kramer. Paco is, is George. Yes, then, of course. Yeah, Elaine is the girl. Yeah. <laughs> Even though Dragon is not a girl. <laughs> and, then, yeah, and then Jodio is Jerry. Okay, we're already... And then the main villain's going to be Newman. Newman. Yeah, <laughs> See, you get it. <laughs> uh, and then there's going to be a dwarf in it as well. He's best friends with... Uh... Uh, All right, so okay. uh, Paco trips and... Whoops. Oops. Out of his zipped backpack falls the super special secret diamond... Uh, and I've... everyone's like, Z-O-M-G, wasn't that zipped up in your backpack? Also, his butt gets flattened up in that. 
that shot. But yeah. <laughs> Araki only has two modes. It's either completely Cake circular or, no cake. or completely flat. There are so many shots where you can tell that, like, I, later on Dragona, he just draws Dragona with, like, a perfectly round, like, lower torso. It's really funny. So it's just whatever day he wakes up. I feel like Araki made a really bad decision with yeah. the, the, the uh, onesie that he drew for Dragona because he's not very good at doing uh, Dragona's uh, anatomy underneath you know, it. You know, the, you remember the freaking you? I, I now understand why Araki picked that song because that's just how he is every every other day. If he closes his eyes... It's, he just goes, wakes up horny. Yeah. <laughs> I can see him being a pretty horny guy. R- what gave you that idea? <laughs> well, he does have children, so we know that Did- he is had sex. But uh we <laughs> have to zip for that or you have to whisper that. So Dragona is like what the hell, dude? Like the diamonds on the ground. You even though like it was zippered in your backpack and like Dragona is is being like, "Yo, dude, I know." Like it's going. This back happened to... to me too, bro. <laughs> it's going back to Rohan. This is obviously heading that way, and then also see the uh, pink dark boy sketch that we talked about earlier, also on the ground, and that was, came out of Usagi's backpack, which also was uh, totally zipped up. Yes, and yeah, there's like they check it. They gotta... Does it say chicken inside of his backpack? Which one, Usagi's Usagi's backpack? Usagi's backpack. It looks like it says chicken. Uh, which is very funny to me, but it could also probably just be a brand that I'm not familiar with. It's a with. reference to the uh, Hidden Gorilla song, Captain, Captain Chicken. Chicken. Yeah, the Hidden Gorilla song. <laughs> he is Captain Chicken. It's probably like a real, I would, it's probably some weird brand. Like, yeah, writer, commenters, let me know uh, how stupid I am. Tell me what real life brand is being referenced uh, here. I, I didn't go back and check, but apparently Dragona also noticed that Rohan had money fall out onto the floor as well. Yeah, Paco dropped all the money that he he stole last chapter okay that happened last chapter okay so, so yeah. yeah dragona's basically like like they're like all right everyone finally sees it it's not just me like everyone is noticing this phenomenon of, yeah. of the things are jumping out of our hands yeah so i think they seem to be attracted to the rock is what they assume so like, it's like if we give it to to jodeo it, it'll be fine like going towards that lava rock whatever that means so, because there were two lava rocks, correct? Yes, and Jodio yes. smashed one. I was like, man, what would have happened if, like, one of the if they had two different rocks and, like, you know, where would they be like magnetized in a weird way? The going in between. I guess the power would just be like multiplied. Where, whatever the bigger rock is is what it goes to. Probably. I mean, that's like gravity. Like, ooh, that's like uh, I don't know how magnets work, but <laughs> neither does ICP. But, <laughs> um. But yeah, so so they basically gonna say yeah, Jodio seems is gonna have to like hold on to this crap, and as he's gonna go for the like, oh yeah, go p- just pick up the diamond. That's when the familiar wires come back and trip him and wrap around his leg, and just basically do the predator wires like the 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 trap of like whipping up to the tree and ready to be like brutally attacked afterwards. Like. Everybody gets like impaled by this by this uh this string and hook. So I believe last time they they described it as kind of being like a plastic, yeah, like a translucent hard plastic, like, yeah, like a weird which material. is a difficult material to break. If it was like almost any other material, it'd be easier to break. It's like it's so funny how it's kind of like like a like a Beach Boy like string line where it's just like, very hard yeah. and like it's, it's, it's a fishing that. hook, but it, it seems to be easier to get out of in that, and they can't go through solid material. Like uh, like Beach Boy could. Beach Boy could was literally could just fish, fish through the wall via like sensing. Yeah, what's interesting here too is that the uh, cat, the cat enemies, seem to be, uh, use they use the diamond like as a trap. So it doesn't seem like they have control over it. I guess they're just kind of taking advantage of. I don't know like, the situation. What, I don't know how any of them can like retrieve any of the stuff they would. Let's see, just drag it around via their stand. But then, like, the problem is that no matter what you do, like, it doesn't matter how, like, tightly you hold on to it, it's always going to jump out. Yeah, unless it, they have, like, the sta- like, there's, like, a guy behind, the, the animal tamer itself, mm-hmm. like, comes out, but we don't know, we don't know what's going, it just seems just, from everything we've seen, it seems just the uh, the cats are, multiple cats, by the way, that we don't know if yes. it's, we also don't know at if least it, three, I think. Yeah, we don't know if it's, like, a group of cats with one stand, or they all have the same stand, or they're going to have a rat, diff- yeah. Yeah, we don't know. The uh so basically before we talk about the fight, um it seems to kind of confirm my idea that this rock is basically like the same it's kind of like the opposite idea of like Toru, where it's like Toru is all about like 
spreading misfortune um, or calamity, rather. This is about attracting fortune, kind of like what Funny's original goal was. Yeah. His original goal was to basically, and it's kind of the same idea where you're like deflecting misfortune and only accruing fortune. But the weird thing is, yeah, it's being attracted just to this volcanic rock for some reason. So it's like they've, they've been able to like, harness crystallize well that, this, not really like, <laughs> the most fragile crystal ever <laughs> is that technically still a crystal i think it still might be a crystal i, think we, I thought we went over this last time of like crystal <laughs> research <laughs> um i don't know i ain't no uh geologist in fact i kind of hate geology personally eh, geology's fine it's always my least favorite uh science study in, in school damn jim calling out all the geologists in the world i i think we literally did have this conversation yeah but uh or rocks crystals, and I think the answer yeah, is no, no. it did. Uh, but uh, damn, no, it's been so long. No, I, I, I'm pretty sure it came up of like it's, yeah, rocks are not crystals. Yeah, but I did like it was like like I I was right. It's not a security. I love I love how Pog's like oh, how is his new security system following? What it's not a security system. It's a stand. The world I was that right. Paco lives in, like the Paco's brain. It's a part three. So, a character's not part of the stand fights mentality of huh. Like it's not a state. What's going on? This case is just a weird thing going on. Or it's like just, you're crazy. It's crazy that he would think that this is like a security system. Well, like, well, it makes me question his experiences in real life. Well, Captain, you wrote baby stand on your hand. You must be crazy. Not actually going. It's a weird stand. <laughs> after all the you know after the, the the bug we have encountered and the doll and the growth and and the car. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I I think that's really interesting. Uh, it makes it obviously like a natural MacGuffin. Um. But I guess what I'm it's really a fragile curious about, ass yeah, it is. Uh, what I'm really curious about though is like, what is the end goal? Like, so right now we've seen it's attracting fortune in like a very literal way. Like, yeah, like it money, is, diamonds. Yeah, like it's literally they said, a, something that is worth value. Yeah, they said because I think he, he mentioned about the drawing. Like, oh, this definitely is worth something. Like, yeah, it could be sold. Like, there at least if there isn't like a implicit value there's a perceived value which yeah, that's, it's, it's very much that's like, interesting yeah like wonder if you would just like oh if you have the idea of pursuing which is like if you have the mental idea of something being worth money it's gonna attract it yeah that's i'm really interested in that like and i'm guessing i think, wonder like i'm kind of wondering if it'll ever be a situation where jodeo values something say he's holding it and he values something more than like something that would be like monetarily expensive and i'm guessing you once you're aware of like you or you see this rock like it starts, you, it affects yourself. You have to it. Because, yeah, that's really the question: is what is the effective? Like, how does it? Yeah, because it, it feels like they're yeah. Like they, if you see this rock, or you acknowledge because it, you know, it, it sort of affects them, even then not no, like realizing this rock's important. At all they just saw it when they opened the safe up. Yeah, I'm trying to think now. So yeah, Paco stole the money. Um, Usagi stole the the, Among, the, and the drawing, and then. The diamond. So they were all aware of all these things. Yeah. Except maybe the money. That's the one that maybe might have been like they might not have known that Paco had that. They also just yelled at Paco for for just stealing everything around him. Yeah, I just think it's more interesting if it's about like what someone values themselves rather than like saying that like oh a diamond has x amount of value like you know what i mean like that's not how the world works like yeah things don't just have like intrinsic value it's like the value hmm. that humans put on them i you curious of how it's going to interact a lot with uh usagi stan because you had a wish for something or you want something which is i guess they would perceive True, value yeah. on so maybe it would, Ooh, like, i didn't think that's a really good connection like i can see it yeah working along with that but uh, yeah, he's the one that like every chapter i want him to use to stand again because i just want to see more more of like what Araki wants it to do. I think it's really interesting. <laughs> it's, yeah, I'm excited to see but yeah, whatever it does more. But yeah, uh, Dragona and uh, Paco get stitched together, essentially with the stand. And, yeah. Hold on, wait one second. I do want to say the so Jodio gets stuck in like a trap that you would like trap a wild the, animal. Yeah, in. a predator. Predator also uses this trap yeah. as well. <laughs> um, yeah, so Arnold is a wild animal, and Arnold, Arnold Schwarzenegger he's catching him. But uh, I always think of this one Simpsons bit. Where Homer and Bart are like stuck in in the middle of like a forest, and they're trying to like set up one of these traps to like capture a rabbit, and they he, he captures it like it like the trap works, but he didn't like anchor it to anything, so it just like slingshot <laughs> launches this rabbit like five miles, <laughs> and I just laugh so hard every time I see that bit. So, but uh, but yeah, they get they get stitched together. People were like, oh, it's like that one Junji Ito thing. Uh, you know, I don't think I've read that one. Yeah, I think it's like only you. I thought people talk about it on 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 Twitter, but 
You're like, oh my god, it's just like the Junji Ito. Like, there's a, lot, there's a lot of horror stuff. There's also like, the, you know, uh, what's it called? The Human Centipede, where people also get stitched together. That is also... <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know me. I love some body horror. Um, yeah, being so... I've di- actually never... Uh, I've never read this one, this Junji Ito story. Yeah. Uh, it's it, it's funny. You know, we really should... I, I, I don't, There's a lot of Junji Ito I don't know about, and I would love to maybe forget, you know, Halloween or, you know, Fog, just to do, like, you know, some uh, Junji Ito episodes. That'd be great. Um, there are a it, ton it, of uh, fantastic ones that we could do. Unfortunately, most of my Junji Ito experiences that shitty anime we watched that one time. Yeah, that's a shame. Well, so Usagi, or sorry, Usagi, Usagi. Uzumaki is We're, getting an adaptation, but I yeah, would recommend. Years, that, I would recommend just reading it. It's, it's on that Persona Five release date where you get that that Winter 2014, and then just never happening for years. Yeah. But I, I mean, I really like Uzumaki. I think that's probably my favorite of his like singular works. Uh, Tomie is pretty good too. Tomie is one that kind of, it's it. He 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 prefers stories where he can do anthologies really. So even though it's like Tomie follows the same character, every uh chapter or every story is like a different weird thing happening. It's not like super consistent. If anybody has a recommend, like, we can do some of the main ones, but some of the like, like you know, do like two big ones and like two minor ones. Be like if anybody has any rec- you know, picks they would Yeah, it'd be fun to do some of the cuz I've read a lot of his like famous one shots. Like I'm sure you you I don't know if you've even read the Enigma. I don't I, I said there's a lot of Junji to I I've never read. There's that. a lot of like really really just like iconic ones. I've very like I said my my Junji Ito experience is very little compared to I do more about the guy and his love of his cats. <laughs> he hates his cats. You always get this wrong. He's terrified of the cats. He wrote a manga about how scared he is because they were, I believe, his wife's cats. That um, when they got married, he they moved in with that's them. So funny. So he drew terrifying art of the cats. <laughs> I love that's so funny. But but yeah, um, the 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 the, the stand is happening. They're doing their typical JoJo a stand, a cat, a cat stand. Yeah, basically. And Usagi books it, takes the rock, takes the diamond, and disappears. So that's what we think happens. I mean, uh, Rohan did say that somebody will probably betray you and your crew. And it could be, you know, doing uh, instead of waiting till like towards the end, like for, for Soda 5 done, did or, or whatever, like make it like, you know, a very obvious who it, who it is and then wait to the end of the game to try to reveal it and not be surprised at all. Mm-hmm. I, I would give a Rocky props if it is just Usagi and like. I, I, I think my early prediction was that he was like a mole or whatever for for the boss or he was going to be the you know the son of the boss and maybe I don't know, something, something involving him was going to you know make the her turn on the crew. I think that uh, Usagi didn't because Usagi's gone and he's not at the car. So I'm I think that Usagi was like captured by the cats. But I mean the, the car <clears> make, <throat> the car is making a sound effect. Is it? It's saying do run, do run, run, do run. Oh wait, oh the car is leaving. Okay, it's it could be it could maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> it could be one of the cats. <laughs> you know how much fucking money I would pay for the next chapter to have a cat the, driving a car, the Virgin Speed King driving, or <laughs> the Chad Cat driving, the Chad Cat. <laughs> what was this chapter called? Jungle something. Jungle warfare. Jungle warfare. Um, yeah, he runs the runs the hell out of there. Okay, he so maybe, out of maybe there. Maybe he did leave. I feel like it, it's kind of set up in an ambiguous way. Like I feel like normally in JoJo, you see you see runs the over the cats. <laughs> that would be fucking hilarious. God, I don't know. So the last thing that he he said was he basically told Dragona like, "Do not go near Jodio. Like, get away from him. Yeah, it's a trap." He, no one says like I Which wish for. True. No one true. says I w- I want that car or I want to get to that car or like anything like that for like his stand to like make a double car, right? <laughs> no, I don't hear. Uh, I didn't. I didn't see anything like that. Um, because that's like that's like the only thing I, I could think of just being a double of the car that he can just fuck up or crash or whatever. You got it. Just be a really janky looking car. I don't. I said I don't know. It would be interesting if he did because I mean, like Paco is like really mad about it. Oh yeah, so it would give Paco. He's like, never liked him in the first place. Like, <laughs> I feel like we're definitely there's gonna be a reason. Like, this feels like a very Iraqi thing to like have a character vanish and then he'll have a triumphant like he'll crash I mean, the car or something. He didn't want Fugo to end up t- like, betraying the team because he didn't want the, like a friend betraying them. But he's like, yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't know what because like I said with part five, Fugo said, oh. Oh, I don't want to have them fight Fugo. I don't want him to fight a friend that betrayed him. And but this one, Usagi's not a friend, to really any of them. Yeah, there wasn't like he's kind the of same annoying. amount of time. Like Fugo had like 
a long time that he spent Hiroki. with the group. And Hiroki's like, I can do this, but only if he's like hung out with them for like a few days a week at most. And they all kind of don't like him. Yeah. And yeah, so they they, they basically uh, Jodio goes, just get under me. And he does November Rain. And I love this page I'll so much of November Rain, like everybody under him. It's cool. It's kind of uh, it's kind of funny that it just works. Like it works. It just uh, it just works. I guess we've kind of talked about it before. How uh, Jodio seems to have the ability to like choose his targets when he yeah when he, he does it. We saw attack. that with, with the drug with the late the lady. The, yeah. The, the, the DA. The, the, the DEA. The agent, FBI yeah. or DEA. She was DEA because Breaking Bad reference. So I think uh, no Breaking Bad reference in this. No, not that I saw. No one got sewn together in, in Breaking Bad. No, no one betrayed Walt. <laughs> no, there's a lot of betrayal in Breaking oh. Bad. <laughs> um, there was no snare trap. Not that I remember. No cats. <laughs> there must be at least one or a cat. jungle a moment in the jungle. I don't think there's any jungles. <laughs> there's some Mexico, but there's no jungles in Mexico. But yeah, the 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 rain basically just it just works. Yeah, it just pulls it down. It works. I it, guess it, it well it like breaks. It breaks the ones on on. I guess on uh, always the what's it called? They're still together. Ones. Yeah, those two are still together, but they're still tied together from like the arm when they're pierced through. But I guess the one that was wrapping around them. Oh yeah, they are at the end. Yeah. Okay, so and then yeah, Jodio is also still tied up. Yeah. So I guess it only really worked on the the ones that were still attacking them. So <laughs> and he can't reach the tree really either. It's it's a whole it's perfectly far away that he can't reach it. A whole four meters away. But in the see the cat, the Siamese cats from the Aristocats, just watching they're they're menacing with and their it looks like there's beady three little eyes. with their beady little eyes yeah one cat for each of them to fight <laughs> Did you imagine them just beating up physically punching these cats it's like the opposite of iggy but like <laughs> the good guy's side uh but yeah and they're looking this way um and that's really it i mean it's just like a funny little funny little chapter yeah funny little jojo chapter uh good i think it's a good chapter i'm, a, I'm it's very interesting because it's not like they're they're in a weird situation each of them like jody is upside down paco and dragona are stuck together like just by the waist and yeah and then usagi's nowhere to be found this is a funny situation for them to all be in like i don't know how they fight this like november rain can like it's a distance you have to be close to jodeo you can't just mm -hmm. Unless he, ha I don't think he can move it like a cl like a cloud or something. It doesn't seem like he has too much control over how how far it can go. Like the same thing, like a, the, the close range stand, like like with two meters or whatever, was like always the range for close range stands. I think so. And and that's what like like twenty thirty feet. Yeah, and I'm wondering. <laughs> I'm, I'm joking. It's not that far. <laughs> two meters is not. That I'm just far. like a smooth operator. I guess can be heels can heal. I guess a little bit maybe. But like I don't know like how they can fight the cats from far away because none of them have a long range stand. Dragona was having an issue just in the last chapter when it was wrapping around, uh, like their hands. So yeah. I don't know if, I when they're sewn together, like when Paco and Dragona are sewn together, I don't know if the smooth operator can really do anything about that. Smooth operator, or like you gotta you gotta move your move your muscle just right, and I have to like just open uh, yeah uh, just open up the wound more or something ah, oh that'd be painful that'd be cool and i'm just like because yeah and I just, and like, yeah even uh dragona has to get like close to you smooth operator you can't get to the cat like i made you a dog now fuck you <laughs> you're a dog now bitch get get genetic genetic yeah, genetically spliced bitch um yeah and i'm like usagi's the only one that's not like in danger and they i don't know why they let him get away it seemed the cats yeah i feel like they one of them would have like want to get him unless it cuts to him in the car trying to get away and then getting affected by the stand that is a good point because we, you, we only saw three last chapter and we see three at the very end so you thought they were after i don't know because even then you think okay they're after the diamond or the rock or something and the cats didn't like watch them attack them in the safe area they just kind of left well the cats like they attacked them from around the corner but they didn't like you know stand there and watch it was just kind of wandered around the corner that's true it didn't stick around because like, that we know of yeah yeah and, yeah, and this this time they're just watching all three of them are watching not like yeah because in the end of the end of the last chapter see if there was more than three there i don't think so i think it was just three because because yeah I, I like i don't know how they fucking beat it is three it's their buttholes they, i do love the i love when they draw the little buttholes that's very funny <laughs> 
Yeah, I, I just it's, it's interesting. Like, I'm like, what are they after? Like, it's it's weird that it's cats because like I'm th- like I just you're know, reading demonic heartbreak. There was a you know person controlling the bird that had the stand. So I'm wondering if they're animal handler or like they're just minions. They're weird like stand shoot or shoots that the their boss had. Maybe their boss is after them. A I don't know. That, a stand that has stands. Yeah, or just like send, send them. I don't. I I don't know what to expect from from these because animal stands, I guess. And it seems so. I, I think we can assume they all have the same ability because they all they yeah, all but, seem to be doing that. That's what I, mean, I guess it, we have precedent for that because like rat yeah. rat had the same ability. And they still haven't shown like where the 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 line starts from. The actually it even comes out of the cats. Yeah, it could be coming. It could be from like a trainer they have, for all we know, and it's just like. It seems like it's coming from the direction. Oh, one thing too. But but never. That, uh, <sighs> Joe, I can't remember who mentions this, but the, apparently it's like riding on the wind. Like yeah, you mentioned a, it's it's dependent on like the wind blowing it. It's almost like they don't have control over. Yeah, because because at one point when they were like going to the safe, but like, like one of them, I think Usagi jumps over it or something. Like oh, that's right. Yeah. So maybe and maybe it's like, was it's, there a fan inside or like a, like a? I don't I don't remember that. I was wondering if there was like a fan or something inside the uh, the room or so like yeah, okay some kind of wind to base it off of and maybe he has to use November rain to like nullify any kind of wind that gusts towards them. And it's like, just weird because like once it's attached to you, it seems like they can control it, but when they actually send it out, it's kind of like I guess it's how zero G works, like. When you're in zero G, like you don't have control of, of where you're going, but once you like grab onto something, then you can like hmm. you can like manipulate your your body, you can move around. Hmm. That's my fan theory. I'm gonna imagine that they have the kilo kilo fruit and they can weigh exactly <laughs> one ounce. Uh, yeah, I, I think where the where the string come from is going to be the cat's bottle, probably. As I was thinking, but they could. I mean, they haven't actually seen the stand itself if it's <laughs> in that or if it comes from. That's why I, th- I feel like. The cats can be a misdirect. I, I, I kind of, I'm kind of getting that of like the cat just kind of being the eyes and like the stand users coming from somebody else. Uh, I, I, I don't know. We'll find out, I guess. Maybe. I guess so. That's that's all my uh, bullshit predictions like coming through. I'm kind of, I'm trying to see if like there's like a, an active fan and it is making like the, the the little like dust when the cat's walking away in the chapter previously. Maybe the cat like cut a path and cut cut a path through, or like it's it's it walking by made like a little like gust of wind because it ran by him or something, and that's what he used. Hmm. I'm guessing. Yeah, hmm. I'm I, I, I'm I kind of like the wind. I didn't like really like, think too much of that, but yeah, I think the wind totally makes sense as like a trigger. I just think that's pretty interesting. Yeah. All right. Um. Do you have any other big predictions then? Good chapter. Good chapter. Yeah. Um. I don't really have any other predictions. I. I just. I liked it. It's one of those classic. Like in the middle of the JoJo fight chapters, there's We're not just too much to it. speculate. We're just starting, and we don't really have like we, there's no um pre chapter stand explanation name given or like you know. It's no like fun, fun, fun. Like you just know, like what's uh, it called? Jungle battle. What's the jungle chapter? warfare? That's not a song, right? I don't think so. I feel like oh, wait, <laughs> well, people are typing jungle warfare song. I um, wonder why. Thanks. <laughs> there is a song. They're called trying to jungle find the, warfare. They're trying to find the closest internet or YouTube video to like ruin the comment section of. Yeah, basically. It doesn't seem like there's like a song that people are pointing to. No, I, I don't. I don't. Th- but people think it's gonna be like Welcome to the Jungle. That'd be funny. It's also it could be maybe that the uh, the it's like a placeholder title. Sometimes that's what I think. That. Okay, so that, that's what I think. I think because until we learn whoever these the string stand slash who really belongs to. Sometimes Araki doesn't know what he wants to do while he's doing it. Sometimes he makes decisions after the fact. So they're gonna be the size Siamese cats from the Aristocrats. Aristocats. Wait, aren't they from? They're not, are they from the Aristocrats? Yeah, Aristocats. Yeah, I thought the. I know that song, but I can sing because it's very racist. We are Siamese, if you please. Yeah, that's the Aristocrats. I thought it was a different one. No, that's the Aristocats. Um, because I watched that movie recently, and it did have another racist scene. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I was like, I don't remember really loving that Sam, movie. Sam, you are wrong. What it's is from it? Lady and the Tramp. Is it? Yes. I don't remember the size of these cats at all in Lady and the Tramp. They well, apparently they're in it because I remember watching the Aristocats recently. It's the expanded universe. I think it's the everyone wants to be a cat song is the racist one. 
uh there's like and by that i mean like there's a moment that's like Ugh. man there's like one cat that's like a really bad chinese uh like love caricature there's a lot there's a lot of ca- you know i guess leading to tramp i just like you just don't know anything from that movie other than the, the, the spaghetti, spaghetti scene. scene yeah I've uh I don't know if I've ever seen it. Yeah, this is from I'm showing Sam the racist cat. I see. I remember seeing that. that this that. is from the Aristocats. That's the okay. Everybody wants I, to be a cat. Okay, I got my racist Chinese cats mixed up. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> you can see how I got mixed up. It's very easy. It sucks that the Siamese cats and Lady and the Tramp are so racist because they're like their body proportions do are not, really creepy looking. I was like, do not give artists any fuel no i i mean like their rate that's bad yeah they're, they're bad I, they're I, caricatures. See, I see how i got mixed up well they're both they're yeah. both intended to be siamese cats which, yes oh it's just it's really bad guys don't look it up it's really what racist. about the live action siamese cats from the live action lady and the tramp i f- forgot they did that yeah they did that uh yeah there's a lot of really really bad shit there's a lot of really bad shit in those <laughs> movies you know yeah. Don't look up Dumbo. You know, if, if you know, it's not my fault. Disney has more than one racist caricature of Chinese people via cats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is kind of a weird. There must have been like one dude. That's there. weird that it happened twice. If I had a nickel for every time, <laughs> <laughs> I have two. Which is really uh, weird. Okay, I don't really have anything else to say about JoJo this week. No, but put your put your uh, crazy ass theories in the YouTube comments. So we are. We would be happy to see. Yeah. Um. And okay. Should we uh get to the uh talk? The the root beer talk. Root beer talk, Sam. I'm, All right. Jojo coffee, discussion. So. Jojo discussion is over. Root beer talk is begun. This is Wawa talk. I'm tipping on my Wawa coffee. It's true. Mm. It's very true. Hundred percent Colombian, baby. <laughs> Just like you. <laughs> no, I'm in a different, <laughs> a different region out in the top of America. <laughs> All right, Sam. Wait. Oh, you go first. Oh, I hate that you say that because I don't really have anything to talk about. Really? Um, that we haven't said on chain on a to Chainsaw Man episode. <laughs> um, yeah, that's kind of the problem. So I have dipped my toe back into a little game called Vampire Survivors. Oh uh, yeah, because it's DLC. I just didn't play it yet. Um, I did actually try the DLC. It's pretty fun. It's like the same, but I actually um, there, I want to shout out. There's a YouTube channel called No Clip. They do really great uh game documentaries. Really professionally produced. They do really good work. And they did one with Vampire Survivors, and I had no idea anything about the developer. It's basically an Italian dude uh, who made it, which looking at, like, all the names of the characters and everything and, like, how a lot of, like, the names of things kind of don't make, like, sense. A lot of them are, like, transliterated Italian puns, uh, which is really hmm. funny. Interesting. <laughs> um, like, for example, like, the the one that's, like, the Bible, it's called the King Bible in, in Vampire Survivors, but he said... Oh, yeah, that's because, like, where I grew up in Rome, there was a radio station that had that name, but it was, like, translate. Like, I translated that name into English. Uh, but he was actually an Italian immigrant who moved to England. Hmm. Uh, and when he moved there, he couldn't... He he wanted to make the work in software and make games, but he didn't have any, like, English skills. So he worked at McDonald's for two years. And then he ended up hmm. getting, like, a shitty job programming for, like, a, like a gambling website. Hmm. And then um, in his spare time with his like coworkers, they would just have a thing every week where they would show off what they're working. That's cool. And he well, he said he would wake up at like 2 a.m. every day and he would work like for six hours straight on Vampire Survivors, do his real job and then just crash when he came home. Hmm. And then um, when they started playing the game at work, they were like, oh, my God, this is so addicting and fun. And it's just like so cool to see a legitimate like overnight success story getting, he's getting an animated series story. i know i kept thinking about that and he's really private too like the one of the funny parts about the interview is they didn't want to have him he didn't want to be on camera so they like made like a little dracula puppet and then for after he did all of like the, the interviews idea. they like synced up the puppet talking <laughs> right him. they probably got the idea of that from resident evil village uh promotion where they had the the four it's the four generals, uh, you know, all the uh, Lady D and uh-huh. all them. They all had little, for advertising, little puppets version of all of them. They were oh, singing, yeah, children show, like, they're all singing and having a great time. Oh, I didn't see that. That's so great. I can see I'm very inspired by it. It's great. It's, I love how it had the looks of the puppets. But yeah, I just, this was like a super charming documentary. And uh, it's just really great when you see like indie s- succeed. And yeah. something I've thought about a lot lately, and I've heard indie developers talk about is how like important Steam is. Yeah. And Steam, it's not too expensive to get your game on there, but like I could tell. If you can yeah. <laughs> if you can get on a sale, 
that is guaranteeing like the the success of your game. If you can sell your game for seventy percent off, like you are going to get millions of eyes on it. Yeah, and uh, if, it's it's just really it'd be Vampire Survivor. You come out with a dollar DLC that has a shit ton of content. Yeah, and that was the last thing I'll say about this because I've just kind of gone on. The one thing I thought was really humble was he said like, uh, he wanted to like charge the the uh what he thought the value of it was rather than like the. I don't know. Like he didn't want to make it super expensive, so he made the game super cheap because he was like, "It's a lot of like asset like stuff," and like I, I like it, he said like the value doesn't it doesn't look like it's that much money, so I didn't want to charge that much money for it, <laughs> and it just was really humble that he wasn't trying to be like a greedy, greedy, yeah. And even with the game as a, as a success, he's like, "Oh yeah, we can just do like add like tons of content for like a dollar, oh add a whole new map, add like three new characters." Yeah, I like, think they've like, done that twice. Yeah, you know? like they're like a dollar, like two dollars full price, but they always go on sale for like a dollar twenty. Yeah, and I can't even imagine how much more that boosts the sales. Now it's on mobile. It's on. Yeah. Like, it's on probably on Switch at this point. And it's really interesting, just in like a larger conversation, because I I think that game is emblematic of like how so many of the most popular games are now, where it like is like this all consuming like attention suck where everything is like carefully designed to like constantly give you stimulation and you're always getting like the numbers go up thing and like you're always getting like a new upgrade um but, but i think it like it's great and it's like fun to play but at the same time it's like do i need this like sh- flashing light machine in front of me at all times like <laughs> is that what my life's become like am i that like an adhd attention starved <laughs> uh so yeah that's that's what i that's one thing that i that really left an impact with me this last week ah uh, nice uh i there's two things i've really been playing uh real quick one thing again back in the persona 5 royal i i i've been doing like the post uh what's it called the post futaba dungeon and now i'm like right before the morgana annoyance arc of morgana being a jealous little yeah. asshole and i'm just like ugh. But uh, I'm enjoying it. See, once, like, it. It couldn't have just happened once. It has to happen like every well, fucking in every fucking game. Yeah, but it also gets cuts in the way of like the new character joining in their their arc supposedly. So I I it's like I hate you, Morgana. That's why I always hate you. So I but no, but no, I like seeing the new stuff in there. Like there's some some new scenes I've been like noticing more. It's been it's, been, it's kind of nice. I like it. Yeah, there's, I'd like to play it one day. There's some good quality of life changes in this game, and I feel like a lot easier to go through. And uh, and I've been playing Death Road to Canada. Oh, I actually bought that too. Yeah, it went on super sale because it was on sale all of like the summer sale, and then I was like, shit, I missed it. And then yesterday it was on sale, so I was like, oh, I guess I'll get it for three bucks. It's a very fun zombie roguelike game, but it's very aggravating when everything just goes doesn't go your way <laughs> at all. Like, and yeah. it has some very bad runs, but no, it's a lot of fun. Like, I had a hilarious. My first run ended in a very funny way, where basically. Um, both my guys were like super low health and it was like, Hey, do you want to like raid this, uh, supermarket, um, to get this? It's kind of guarded. And I was like, sure. And then it wasn't even, I wasn't even playing. It just auto rolled for like success and they both failed and died and immediately just game over. I had no say over this. There was like one NPC I saw. It was like a panda. It's like, you can attempt to tame the panda, but you have a 50% chance of dying. I'm like, I'm not fucking. That is I, way too high. No, yeah. I'm like, I'm thinking, I have cloud on my team. I'm just going to stick with that. <laughs> After playing FTL and getting like hyper aware of how percentages are always against you. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's how I feel about like, we play, we both play Marvel Snap. Um, and anytime I play a, a deck that has a card that's like, oh, there's a 50% chance of it discarding the good card or the bad card, it's actually a 100% chance of always discarding oh, the good card. Oh, there goes my Modoc. Fuck you, too. Yeah. <laughs> Every time it's Hella. Every fucking time I discard, it's always Hella. And like, <laughs> I need her. I need Hella for the last play. <laughs> I hate it. But uh, but yeah, that's the two big things I've been I've been playing anyway. I haven't really been... I just, I've been watching some stuff, but I usually say that for Chainsaw Man. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, I think that's everything. Should we plug it up? Please do. It's fucking hot. It's we'll, the middle we'll, of fucking summer. We'll, we'll plug up the the uh, the open zippers of the backpacks that <laughs> yeah. opened up. Uh, thank you, everybody, for listening. Again, if you like the, the, the podcast episode, like, you can subscribe to the channel. You can leave a review wherever the po- you listen to this podcast at. It helps us a lot. You know, get some get some name or name out there. You can also follow the podcast on Twitter. It has me and Jim's Twitter handles on there as well. You can um, join our Discord. You can also, as I mentioned earlier, you know, 
uh, go to our Patreon so you can be shouted out at the top of every Joe Kakaka episode. And get, get, we mentioned our Chainsaw Man episode that came out recently. Like, listen to that. And we have some uh, stuff coming soon because uh, some some anime that we covered before started up. So It's true. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, we just dropped the Chainsaw Man episode. And I don't know when this one's going to come out. But maybe maybe soon. Maybe it'll come out the day of chapter. But we'll see. <laughs> We'll see. And we have, so yeah, that look forward to a, uh, a conquest of some sort coming. <laughs> I do want to just kind of implore, I hate to like beg for attention on the internet, but our last episode got age restricted, which is the really? first time that ever happened. Yeah, our last Joe Cocker got age restricted, and it really killed that video. That it a... died in the water. It got no freaking, more views after it got age restricted. Freaking podcast. I know. So please, if you like the show, give us a, give us a little share like us really all this commenting stuff it sounds so annoying but it really does help with the yeah. algorithm it helps get us uh shown to more people Fucking youtube man i know what do we do except say the fuck word a lot <laughs> i guess we did begin this one talking about like menstruation so that's kind of well, i didn't say curse word though i we mean did. i i behaved we just said cycle over I, and then. <laughs> they don't care about that you can talk about that on, on youtube <laughs> but just, if you don't say if you say a bad bad a bad bad word you say hell or damn or piss or cuss <laughs> you say come all you want. Yeah, no, you can't. Fluids are fine. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You quote the YouTube evermore. <laughs> it is funny because, like, I know Scott the Waz. The only thing he says is piss. That's basically the only curse he says. Yeah, yeah. You, and you ain't gonna put a buzzard of censor. <laughs> no, never, never, ever, ever. All right, all right. Thank you so much for joining us. We will see you next time. See you next time on seven. Joe Kakaka. Bye. Bye. Bye.